Authorities in Cowlitz County, Washington, have arrested a rape victim because prosecutors want to force her to testify against her assailants. Now, the woman is unidentified, but back in 2012, she was kidnapped by her own boyfriend and forced to do sexual favors to uh, a man that he owed money to. Jesus. And it is a hideous story. Uh, she had promised on several occasions that she would go testify against them, but she wouldn't end up going to the court appearances. So as a result, uh, prosecutors were able to obtain a warrant. There is a law in the county that allows them to obtain a warrant if they want to force someone to testify in cases like rape. It's very rarely used, but in this case it was used against her. And she got arrested and she was placed behind bars. Now keep in mind that she's also homeless. So authorities had a hard time getting in touch with her. And they basically warned her, if it's difficult to get in touch with you again in the future, we're going to throw you back in jail again. Now, um, okay. It's Remember, she was the original victim. She was the victim of this case. And I understand that prosecutors want to convict these guys because they're dangerous. I mean, this is a rape, and you want to get them off the streets. At the same time, having the, treating the victim this way is not only going to deter other victims of rape from coming forward in the, in the future, but it, it's also not a good way of handling the situation if you want her to do solid testimony in this case. Yeah, look. Um, I, the critical information in this story was that she was homeless, to be honest. Because, I, I, of course, Anna's right, and I, I get where they're coming from. We all want to put the bad guys away, and what these guys did was deplorable, and everybody's got an interest in protecting the rest of the community from them. Everybody agrees to that, right? There's no way they're going to arrest her after she was raped if she was powerful, okay? She is the wife of a, some business leader or a politician. They're not going to arrest her after she was raped for not testifying. They'll say, you know, whatever, Miss, mm -hmm. you name, whatever, Miss Smith, we're so sorry for what happened. They'll ask her politely once or twice, and that'll be that. Yeah, I mean, it's a traumatic experience. Being asked to relive that experience in order to testify is a really, really difficult thing to do, right? So you want to be in a situation where you help the victim out as much as possible so she feels comfortable testifying. You're creating a situation where she feels as uncomfortable as possible, and as a result, she's not, she's not going to want to testify, and then you're going to force her to do it against her will. Who knows how well she's going to be able to, you know, give the prosecutors what they want. And I think Barbara LeBeau, uh, she uh, said to TDN.com the following, I thought this was the perfect statement. In this case, it had to be added, uh, it had the added irony of using a warrant to hold the woman against her will so she can help convict someone else of holding her against her will. Yeah, look, we all wish she'd gone in and testified against uh, those people. We want them off the streets uh, for what they did to her. I, I don't think it helps the situation when you arrest the victim. Uh, it's totally the wrong way to go. I, I actually had a case where the woman was badly beaten by her husband. He actually smashed her face through a wall and broke her neck. And she showed up in court and she was wearing that little halo device. And during the entire testimony, she claimed she slipped and fell and that he didn't do anything bad to her. Um, so how often do prosecutors compel people? Uh, to it, show it, it's it's pretty often because there's a lot of because people don't want to get involved. So if there's a witness, so in her case, um, she gave a statement to the police officer who took the police report, and there are reports from the from the uh, hospital. So I had to treat her as a hostile witness and I had to ask her, you know, leading questions and stuff like that. I mean, of course, I wasn't I was very easy with her, but she was clearly not going to help out in the, in the prosecution, but there's enough evidence that we can get the guy anyway. Steve, in your opinion, is like incarcerating the person for failing to testify a, a good solution to that problem? I mean, is there another solution to compel them to testify without like criminalizing them? There's two things you can do to them. You can find them or you can put them in prison or put them in jail. So, you know, you're being held in contempt of court, meaning that you're not listening to what the court is telling you to do. So there's that, that woman, Judith Miller, uh, she wouldn't testify against, was it Clinton? And, um, and she, was, she, was in, she was in jail for, I'm sorry, not Clinton. Um, against uh, the Bush officials. Right. To say uh, who her source was. That's exactly, right, right, right. Yeah, so she would refuse to testify, so they held her in contempt, and she served a long time in, in jail for that. Right. I so that. it's an accepted form of our criminal justice system. Does it have flaws? Absolutely. In this instance with a rape victim, this is insanity. Uh, I can't believe they went this went this route, mainly because this 
tells women, you know what, don't come forward. Exactly. Because if you come forward, then they're going to put you in jail if you don't cooperate with them. 